Washington. And we're in Michigan. And the renovation starts right now. Man, that's awesome. Michael, Tony, Eduardo, and Paige. We're on our way to Armada Township, Michigan, which is just outside of Detroit, to meet the Gillum family. Hi, ABC! We're the Gillum family! Hi, I'm Mary Ann, and I'm 32 years old. Hi, I'm Abigail, and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Gabriel, and I'm 9 years old. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm 5 years old. Hi, I'm William, and I'm 12. This is Peter. He's 2 years old. And this is Naomi, she's yeah, three months yeah. old. So this time last year, the Gillums thought they had it all. They had five beautiful kids, another one on the way, and after 12 years of marriage, Marianne and David just bought their first house. We had just bought this house just before our 13th anniversary, and um, it was quite a celebration for us. We went out to eat, we celebrated, we, we were so happy. The place needed a lot of work, but it was theirs, and David had big plans for it. He jumped right in, started renovating, hoping to turn this house into their dream home. People even laughed at us because, wow, this house was too small for you guys. But we were determined that we were going to add rooms onto it and make it big enough because we were renting here in Armada, and we wanted to stay in Armada so that my husband could continue to be on the volunteer fire department. He loved the fire department. He loved serving the community, and he did not want to move. Then, after just a few weeks of working on the house, David got sick. He ended up getting flu-like symptoms that he thought would pass, but they didn't. On Christmas Eve, David lay down next to his wife in bed and ended up going into convulsions. I was just looking at him and thinking, wake up, wake up. I shook him and said, David, David, but his eyes were rolling. And I yelled out for my daughter to call 911. 911? I just heard to call. My husband is dying. Well, what's wrong with him? I don't know. He's falling at the mouth. Is he breathing? No. Oh, Ma'am, you need to start some CPR. <laughs> Ma'am. So that night, Marianne lost her husband and her best friend. I loved him with everything, and I still do. It gets worse. Doctors believe that Dave's death was caused by an allergic reaction to toxic mold in his house. <laughs> I'm just talking to him. <laughs> playing with him. Doctors told Marianne that she needed to move her kids out of that house immediately so they wouldn't suffer the same as David. Well, that's exactly what she did. They packed up that day and moved out immediately. Now I'm lost. I don't know what happened. I lost my husband, and now I'm lost. I'm just dreaming that you would come, but if you can't, you can't. But if you can, I would be so happy and so blessed. We need to build these guys a comfortable house where we can get this family back on track and they can start focusing on being a family together and looking toward the future. So right now, we're headed to Sister Sarah's house where they're staying. They have no idea we're coming and I cannot wait to see your face when they see What do you say? Can we help this family out? Yes, yes. we have to. Bring it in here, people. Let's make it happen. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Then let's do it! People, come on, come on, come on, here we go. We surprised the family at Sarah's house, Sarah's Marianne's sister, because that's where the family was staying at the time. They had been staying with different friends, and at this point in time, they were there with their aunt. Good morning, Gillum family! Marianne, Abigail, Gabriel, Ariel, Peter, Naomi, Sister Sarah, wake up and get her out of here! Hey there! How are you? Face 
face was just like, you could not have come any sooner. We needed you. You guys are a little surprised, are you? Yes, thank you. I want to go home. I want to go home, and this is my ticket. I get to see my husband's dream come true right before my eyes, and this is beautiful. Their dream was to own a home, and the sad thing is that this dream of owning a home is what ultimately resulted in David's death. When you see somebody this young losing the love of her life, you just wouldn't want that to happen to anyone, especially on Christmas Eve, especially if someone with six kids, and you want to do anything you can to help. <laughs> well, I can promise you this. We're going to make sure you guys get to go home. We're going to work at it all this week in memory of him and finally give you that dream house that you guys always wanted. The cool thing is, is that while we're building you guys a house, you guys are going on vacation. <laughs> You want to know where you're going? Yes! You're going to sunny Florida! Woo! Right. Hi, we're going to Florida! And Sister Sarah, you're going too! Woo! Here's what we need to do. We need to go inside, get you guys packed, and then uh, you and I will actually go check out your old house that you can't live at anymore. Okay. okay? Sounds like a plan. The old house is just unsafe for the kids, but I think we need to see it. So Marianne and I are going to go over there, check out the old house, while the design team stays with the kids, and get some new ideas for the new house. Come on, buddy. Yeah! Here, let me see if I can get him out. So Daniel said he likes kickball. It's his favorite game. So since Daniel loves kickball, I'm going to take care of his room this week. Nice! Oh, that's, man, a home that's a home run. Dad used to be a firefighter. Your dad used to be a firefighter? Do you remember Daddy in his firefighting suit? Yeah. Oh, those boots were so heavy. Look at Ariel's picture. Hold look it up. Look at guys, look at that. Hold it up so we all can see it. Oh, wow. Let's give her a hand. Beautiful piece of art. I want to do Ariel's room. She loves art. She's four, and she's going to have her own little art studio. And so that's what I'm going to do this week for her. So this is it, huh? Yes, this is our house. This is our first house together. We got off the bus, and the first thing I noticed is what beautiful farm country we're in. You've got these fields of beans and fields of corn, and then there's this tiny, kind of cool-looking little bitty farmhouse, you know? And it was their dream home, but all that got taken away really early. So all this time he's renovating the house, but you had no idea that all this mold is affecting right. his health. I had no idea. He wasn't coughing beforehand. He was healthy. He came home, he said, oh, there's a tickle in my throat. I need to start taking some cough medicine. So I started taking some cough medicine. And I said, David, do you want to go to the hospital? You know, you don't feel good. He was just like, oh, I'll be fine. We were sitting in bed and watching a movie with the kids. And I was nursing Naomi. And I heard this noise, like, like a snoring noise, like he wasn't breathing. And I turned around and I screamed, and he was having a seizure. I said, Abby, Abby, and she screamed too. And I got to call 911, call 911. I rolled him over, put him on the floor, I started CPR. Me and Mom tried to resuscitate him, try to get him breathing, but nothing seemed to work. My kids need to know that we're going to stay together. We're going to be OK. But I can't be everywhere. And that's the really hard thing now, having six kids. you got to depend on people, because you can't always be there for everything. You're an incredibly strong woman. Thank you've been you. Through, you've been through a really tough year. And I think with our help, you can be able to raise these kids. Mm -hmm. And they're going to turn out to be incredible human beings. Oh, you know? I hope so. Thank you, you so off. much. Thank you, Ty. Oh, you're awesome. David's dream really does need to come true because without it, they don't know where to go. And I think David's gonna be smiling down this week and hopefully we're gonna make that dream come true. Hey, come on in. Wow, this it's like you guys kitchen. were still living here. I just said, I'm just gonna leave it all behind me and just get out and then pick, worry about picking up my pieces later. I now, should we worry about the mold itself or is it more when, did he take out most of it when he was? Yeah, it was more of just ripping the mold. Ripping the, the cabinets, took the yes, air. took the spores to the air and that's when everyone got sick. Would you feel better if you got a mask though? Or you... um, I'm okay, I know if I'm just here an hour, I'll be all right. Okay. Once we went inside, it was like life stood still. It was like they just packed up everything and it left because the house was that dangerous. What's in there? Is that storage or That's bathroom? the basement. That's the basement? That's the basement. That's where I wouldn't go without a mask. 
Do you want to go down there? Uh, we can go down there. Should we get masks yes, on? Yes, I think, yes. Marianne and I put on masks and we went down there in the basement where the real problem lies. So he was working down here, huh? Yeah, he was working down oh, here. Oh, I can definitely smell something down here. It def definitely Isn't smells it? moist. He Basically would lay so. right up there. I don't know, it's pretty dark over there, but that's where yeah. the pipes are. We, we can see the outside if you can look. Water was actually coming in from the outside of the house and filling up down there, and that's what was causing the moisture and causing the mold problem. And so he started getting sick after he was working down yeah, there? Yeah, he started get, just he didn't show any signs for about, say, about a month. Who would have guessed that something as simple as mold, when you tear things out, it gets airborne, and then, and of course, it poisons your lungs. It's hard to believe that this could cause a fatality, but it happens every year. I mean, it's just a horrible thought. So this is you guys' bedroom? Yeah, this is our bedroom. Is this his helmet? Yeah, that's David's helmet. I don't want nothing to happen to it, so it, it's, it's, it's in a safe place right there for now. Gotcha. These are the roses he gave me for our anniversary, celebrating 13 years. I just realized that this is where um, yep. he died. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Thank you. What was tough was going into Marianne's bedroom, and that's the same bedroom that, that David actually delivered their baby, delivered Naomi and brought her into this world. He was a paramedic, so he was qualified. And then shortly after, 24 days later, he died in the same bed, in the same room. So. And then having the realization that you're on your own and you're alone and you've got to raise these kids by yourself. I just can't imagine what that was like. You realize how tough it's been for these kids because they've been moved around, they don't have a home anymore. Well, the cool thing is, is at the end of this week, they can finally come home. Well, look at that. Here come the kids and the designers right now. All right. Hey. Get everybody packed up. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Take I was sending the family off to vacation and Abigail says, hey, Ty, one second, I, I want to show you something. I'm like, okay, what do you want to show me? So this is the memorial. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. I walk out there to this little area that they've made a memorial for David, and um, they planted all these flowers. It was just something that we could look at every day and just remember Dad. You miss him, don't you? Yeah. So this is something we definitely need to keep, huh? Yeah. OK. She asked me to make sure that it was here when they got back. I was like, Abigail, I promise you, it will be here, plus something even better. So guys, we'll see you in a week, OK? Have fun. Bye. Talk to you soon. to meet the builders, okay? This is Rick Molini with American Heartland Home Builders and his buddy Anthony Lombardo with Lombardo Homes. These guys are gonna help us build a house for this family. And I tell you what, man, they can surely use one. So Rick, anything you wanna say? I've heard many stories about the Gillian family, but the one that's touched me the most is the very first story that I heard. Last Christmas Eve, while lying in bed with his wife, he leaned over and said, Marianne, I had a dream that you'd live in a seven-bedroom home one day. He died the next day. We're here today to fulfill his dream. And the most important thing that we have to realize is that this is an opportunity to be part of something much bigger and greater than ourselves. So all my friends here today, I say, we will succeed. Yeah. Rick Marlini gave an amazing speech. Here's this big guy, this big tough guy, but I'll tell you what, it's a big tough guy with a great big heart. You could get used to this, huh? Yeah. Good morning, Gillum family. Kids, man, I hope you guys are having a great time on vacation. I tell you what, there's a few people who would like to say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi. I think you guys have got a lot of friends in the area. I know 
There's one friend, Sandy, who was there that, that very day and was really kind of by your side. Ty introduced us all to a firefighter, a woman named Sandy. She and her husband were the first ones to get the call when David passed away on Christmas Eve. Most of you didn't know David and didn't know the special person that he was. In respect for our fallen firefighter, we have the ladder trucks that will be crossing their ladders and we will have a moment of silence. He would be so honored. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ty. That was for David. Oh, David. Thank you, Sandy. That was awesome. So what do you say, people? Are we ready to do some demo? are escorting our cement trucks here, so we don't lose any time. Your record was 94 hours yeah. at 3,300 square feet. We're gonna beat that, we're gonna do it in 90 hours. Once we said go, these guys went. It is incredible, I mean, you blink and you've missed something with these builders. They're gonna start framing tonight around eight o'clock. According to their calculations, by sunup tomorrow morning, this house, 3,800 square feet, should be framed. These guys are on fire, they're kicking it. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> This may look like day four, but this is day three. Less than 24 hours ago, this wasn't even here. I'm talking about a framed house on a foundation with windows in it, with a front door in it, with a roof on it. We've already done the concrete pour, the flooring, the framing, the plumbing. The electrical, we're on drywall. And honestly, that's not bad for 24 hours. As of right now, we're 12 hours ahead of schedule. Yeah! What Rick and Anthony pulled off in having that house to that stage, day three, incredible. My people are pumped up, everyone's pumped up, and we're just having fun yeah! doing this. I'm impressed, seriously impressed. We may be building the Gillum family their dream home, but what we're actually doing is building them a safe home. All of this lumber has been dipped in a chemical, making it blue. It's blue wood. And what it does is keeps mold from growing on this lumber. Mary Ann's gonna have the peace of mind that she's raising her family in a beautiful home and a safe home. The kitchen cabinets have arrived, and it's a good thing because we're actually ready to install them on day three. Okay, here's the thing. Every time I turn around, something else is done. So let's see just how fast these drywallers really are. On your mark, get set, go! That's it! It's a record! 10 minutes and 22 seconds, people! These guys set out to break all records. Not only did they want to build an awesome house, but they wanted to shatter the record of the build time. Something magical started on Wednesday. It was the amount of enthusiasm and passion and teamwork I've never experienced before. Keep it up, guys. Smoking, man. So 
So I uh, asked Gabriel what he really likes, and he loves video games, specifically car racing games. So I am going to give him a car racing technology room. We may have to do one more test when we put some sand in it. Here in Michigan, it gets really cold in the winter. So I thought, why not maybe bring the outside in a little bit and do a sandbox room with sort of a beach theme for Peter. I know he's going to be really happy about that. glass box that we're doing for Marianne that Michael asked me to do. Michael had a great idea to make a box to hold these flowers that David had given Marianne for their anniversary. We had to bring them back in the house. They represent the love that these two people shared and you can't not put them back into the house. Actually making a glass box was pretty easy but it takes a long, long time. But the final result was so gorgeous. I think she'll love it. So the next thing you know, the house was finished. Finn got it done! Well right done. Done. These guys built this house in 53 hours and 54 minutes. You have beat and smashed and shattered all records. If you build it that fast, Kind of says, okay, well, maybe we should make sure it's built correctly. So, of course, we bring in the inspectors like we always do, and these guys took a thorough look around. This is our CFO final building. These guys are some of the best we've ever seen. We got certificate of occupancy! It's never been done. In fact, if you, if you break that down, that's basically building one square foot every 51 seconds. It was you guys as a team making me and Anthony look good. Thank you very much, guys. Great job. I have a real soft spot for children. And uh, if the tables were turned and I would pass away and my wife and my kids were in Marianne's situation, I would hope that somebody would come in and do this for them. Furniture moving this time was kind of different. You can slow down. Why? You've got plenty of time, Michael. We're two days ahead. Be careful, guys. Ready? Watch careful. That's glass. Go in. It was kind of nice. It was kind of leisurely. We knew we could move in a little at a time. So we could go over there, or it could go over here. When you got two days to play with, you can find the perfect wall. The sky's the limit here. over and Rick and Anthony are sitting there in lawn chairs laying out. They got sunscreen on. Rick's got his shirt off. Uh, don't, don't get up or anything, guys. You know what the way I look at it is if you build a house in 53 hours and 54 minutes, you deserve to lay out and watch this move furniture in. Let's go do it. Okay. All right. Really? But finally, they saw a page with this great big headboard and, you know, began to help out. Oh, Putting us back to work. Where do we go? What the heck? I got him working again. Rick, 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 I, uh, I need you to have your booties on and perhaps a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen it all. Okay, I can't really show you exactly what my secret project is, but I'll give you a hint. It's kind of great. Okay. No, I got a question for you. What? Sandbox. Yes. In a two-year-old's bedroom. Yeah. You think it's a good idea? Why not? Putting a sandbox in a two-and-a-half-year-old's room. What part of that sounds like a good idea? There's no way in the world that that sand will stay in that bedroom. It's going to find its way in the stairs and in these crevices and in the furniture. I think it would work. I would do it. I think it's I... very different. Would you want sand in your kid's room? No. I think if you went out and, and, and polled every mother in this country whether or not she'd want a sandbox in their kid's room. Okay. Listen, we want to uh, ask you all a little bit of a question. Okay. If you're a mom, raise your hand. Okay. okay. If you're not a mom, zip it. <laughs> Do you think that's a good idea to put a sandbox in a little boy's room? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely love it. Play with the sand, and I can have five minutes of peace. I think it's a bad idea! Most of the moms said yes. So, Peter, you get the sandbox. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah, you've been great. Ariel's coming home. I wanted 
washable surfaces throughout this entire room. How easy is this? It just wipes right off. My room was just the best, but it needed a little, you know, touch. It just needed something. Have you ever wanted to paint on a wall? Yeah! yeah. We're not gonna wash this off. We're gonna leave it so Ariel sees it. Awesome. Awesome. So you wanna go paint? Yeah! Let's go, guys. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. When you let 15 kids loose, yeah in a room with finger paint and walls that you tell them they can paint on? I'm gonna do green. I'm gonna do red. That's a rainbow, and that's the sun mixed in the rainbow. Of course it is. It's beautiful. It's not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> I mean, really? All week, all I heard Michael saying was like, kickball, I don't know kickball, I'm kickball. You like a country French house? Great. You like a beachy tropical house? I'm your guy. And I know Michael was worried about it, but it is so cute. Little plexiglass wall units that were just stuffed with kickballs. It's a start. We're bringing the family home, but what they didn't know is that before they see the house, well, we've got another surprise in store for them. Hello, get them, family! <laughs> The limo pulls up at Ford headquarters. There's the family gets out. They're like, where are we? And I'm like, you're going to like it. Follow me. All right, let's go. Uh, these are the 2007 Ford Expedition ELs, now, what stands for Extended Link. Wow. Well, you get to pick one of these SUVs, and it's all yours. So guys, I'm serious. Go pick out your SUV. They freaked and just went running over. They didn't know which one to pick. Doors are opening, horns are honking, windshield wipers are going. This is gorgeous. I've always wanted a foot in my whole life. And I end up with Naomi, you know, in my hand. And uh, I'm like letting her know. I think they like the white one, but then I think they're kind of liking the red one. OK. In 10 seconds, you have to make a decision, OK? You ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This one. You're positive? Everybody's unanimous. Yes, thank you. All right. The whole family was just so excited. And just the fact that they can all fit in you know, they can all ride together. It's pretty cool. Ford is actually going to take care of the thing. He's going to polish it up and deliver it right in your driveway. Uh, wow. I was just overwhelmed with uh, generosity. I knew that this car was going to be everything that we needed. It's just amazing to me. I'm really, truly blessed. sacrifice for my family just to get us home and to finally be home is the greatest gift they could give me it's been an incredible week man we've worked with some awesome people and built truly an incredible house for you guys and we also built it in record time I'm not kidding 53 wow. hours and 54 wow. minutes <laughs> and, um, and trust me, we do this a lot, and that, like, doesn't happen. That's what David would have done. David would have worked until the wee morning hours to get me home. And that's what they did. Are you guys ready to see what's behind that bus? Yeah! yeah. yeah. It all in with my eyes. I couldn't take it all in with my, with with all the noise. It was a very heavy, overwhelming feeling that everything's going to be okay. And I imagine it might be a little bit like heaven is what I felt. This is my home. We can live here. It's going to be safe and so beautiful and 
I couldn't believe it was ours. It's just, it's the greatest gift someone could ever give. These are the guys that oh broke the record and left you guys out. Oh, beautiful. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much. You did it. You guys did it. Oh, to say the least, it's, you know, it's breathtaking. You know what? Abigail broke my heart. She was genuinely very grateful. And um, there was a girl that, because of her father's death, has had to grow up way faster than she really had to grow up. You turned my morning into joy. <laughs> For so long, I couldn't smile. But now I can say it's going to be OK. Well, it's given us joy just being here this week. <laughs> it's been absolutely incredible. This is the dream David always wanted for you guys. Yes. And this is wow, your house. It is so beautiful. And it's really it's your so house. Open. And it's really seven bedrooms. Is it? <laughs> so are we happy? You guys like it? Right? Like it? Right? OK, so give them family. Who'd like to see the inside of your house? When you walk through that door, yes. you're finally home. And I know that's where David always wanted you guys to be. Yes. So guys, walk through that door. All right. All right. through that front door. I couldn't believe it was our house. What was there before it was not safe for us to live in at all. And now we've got this beautiful stone house and it was beautiful. Look at the warm colors in this house. I want to see. <laughs> so what do you think of your house? I love it. It's beautiful, right? It's everything that I want. It's just gorgeous. I just attribute everything that was in David's heart was put there. I know as clear as day that that dream was this house. And looking at this house is uh, part of my husband. It's beautiful. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Just, What's up? Just looking at the pictures. You like the photos? I love them. <laughs> I know all the, the stuff that you guys had in your house. You just, you evacuated your house and yes. then you heard about the mold, yes, okay? Yes, I couldn't keep it. So here's what we've done. Whatever we could save and, you know, your valuable things like your photographs and, and all that, we had it clean and sterilized Thank and you. brought it back into this home. Now, let me tell you about this home okay. and one of the reasons why you can actually sleep very soundly at night, okay? okay. This house was yeah. constructed and framed with mold-proof lumber. Wow. It's, it's actually treated, yeah. <laughs> You don't have to worry about your kids ever being affected by mold. Wow. Okay? That's an awesome gift. So, you guys like the house so far? Yes! Do you I love right? the house! You love the house? I love the house! Woo! Well, here's the thing. There's a lot more house to see. Woo! So guess let's what? Let's go see it! Go check out the rest Woo! of your house! Come on, let's go! Oh, my gosh. my favorite room. So you got a net on your bed, right? Check that out. Oh, man, it feels good. Oh, right in the bullseye. Yes. Wow, oh, look it. This is your room. Come on, let's go see it. It's your own little beach. Look at this. Oh, Mom, this is made out of real sand. Is it really? Real oh. sand. Whenever you want to clean that up or just start over, okay. all you have to do is take a wet rag, okay, and you just scrub it and it comes right off. Oh my goodness. Go ahead, dip it in there go and swing it away. Set. Look, we're gonna go see the rest of the house. You uh, you stay with that, okay? You're doing great. She was so busy with it, she didn't really even want to talk anymore. She just wanted to paint. You're doing great, don't worry. I talk to myself a lot. <laughs> you know, I could be screaming at you with a megaphone. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Oh, my goodness. My first thing I want to open the door and get in the bed and crawl right in and go to sleep. <laughs> it just feels like home already. I think they captured everything 
that my husband was to me, the pictures on the dressers, they captured everything I could imagine in my room to be. Oh, and my roses. Oh, they're beautiful. And my roses on the dresser from David. It was really nice. It was really, really, really um, touched that, that, um, that he kept it safe and, and sacred. This is gorgeous, what do you Ty. Think? This is everything I ever wanted. Is it awesome? It's beautiful. I couldn't be any happier. It's everything I could imagine David doing for me. And of course, I know one of the most important things. Yeah, David's hat is right exactly. there. <laughs> thank you. So oh, he make would sure be so you. proud that you guys did this for me. He would be so proud. Well, there's one more room that uh, okay. has been my, it's been my secret project. It's actually Abigail's bedroom. She's just such a, a sweet kid, you know. And I know she's been through a lot. You can't even imagine what a kid like that's gone through, seeing her, her dad pass away. And I just wanted to make sure that Abigail had a very special room. I was so excited to just say, Abigail, go check out your new room. You're only 12 years old, and you've been through quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want you to know, I think you're an awesome kid. Mm -hmm. You've really helped out your mom in ways that I don't think you really can even know. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I've locked myself in that room <laughs> for the week, trying to make it kind of special for you. And I want you to see it right now, OK? okay. Go check out your room, Abby. That meant a lot to me that he thought I was really special and to make my room his secret room. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's beautiful. When she opened the door, the one thing I heard her say was, it's beautiful, and that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's just a big burden that got lifted off of our shoulders that we don't have to worry about where we're gonna live. But I know no one can replace Dad. So, did it put special. a smile on your face? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Well, I'll tell you what, we've actually got one more thing to see. And it's okay. pretty awesome. And it's oh, called yeah. a backyard. <laughs> All right. So, before you left, we had a talk, and you told me how important your garden was. We wanted to make sure it was here, but we also made some changes, and the designers have helped us do that. Hi, you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. I think it's awesome that you you want to remember your dad, because I know he meant a lot to you, but we just wanted to help. I definitely think that your garden should probably use a few more plants, <laughs> and this garden will grow, and hopefully you guys are going to grow, <laughs> and your dad's going to look down and see what incredible human beings you guys have turned out to be. And I think he's kind of looking down and, and can't wait to see you grow tall like those sunflowers, you know? So would you like a little help plant some seeds? Sure. <laughs> yeah, designers, you feel like planting some seeds? Oh, yeah. All right. It meant a lot to me that the design team and Ty wanted to make the memorial something special for me because it means a lot. It's something that I can look at every day, and it reminds me of Dad. David had a dream the night before he passed away that he was going to have a seven-bedroom house, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to live to see that happen. It was so cool to see a reality that was just a dream seven days ago, and we and this community and these builders made it happen. Miracles do happen, man. They really happen. Just meeting your friends and your family in this community. I know I'm not alone. <laughs> You're not. It's, it's amazing. This is beautiful. I knew I needed a miracle. I knew I needed help. You guys have actually completed what I needed. And I'm so very blessed. Thank you, ABC. Well, I guess there's just one last thing to say. Yeah. And that's, welcome home, Gillen family. <laughs> welcome home. Yeah. Music tonight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's plant some seeds. <laughs> Seriously, who is that? Hey, hey, kids, I need a little help here. I got some candy. Kids, Eduardo, I'm gonna call your mother. Eduardo, you dude. I'm gonna kick your dude. You're fired, buddy. You understand me? Fired.